It's always a nice piece. Savior like a shepherd lead us. Thank you, Jeff, for leading us into worship this morning. And welcome to worship here on a beautiful morning at Christ Covenant Church. Uh, it is uh, January 21st. For those of you that are uh, worshiping via video, we want to always make sure that we know what day it is for you guys. Welcome. Uh, we had a little snow this week. I think everybody has survived, and so uh, we keep on plugging away. Uh, as always, you know, we encourage you to print out and put on your refrigerator door or wherever the insights that get sent every week. There's always some information in there. Uh, things like, you know, this week, bowling team on Tuesday night, the chosen small group. Of course, on Thursdays, we have bells and choir. Uh, if you're interested in any of those things, uh, you know, you can talk to us and we can plug you into some of that, some of those things. Uh, we at the end of the week, we have our community breakfast from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Everyone is always invited to join and come and eat, or if you'd like to come and volunteer. We usually get volunteering around 7 o'clock or so, 7.30 or so people, uh, uh, staff eats, and it's always a wonderful time of fellowship, uh, working together, cooperating, and all that kind of stuff. And of course, serving uh, our neighbors and friends in the community. Uh, I have a couple other notes for us uh, today. Uh, this coming week, starting uh, tomorrow, Monday through Friday, Pastor Kathy and I, we're going to be in Chicago. It's the Covenant uh, Midwinter Pastors Conference. And this is the first time in like nine years uh, that we're going to be going both together. Uh, we've always kind of, you know, you can't leave like a 10-year-old home alone. And so uh, one of us has always stayed home with Kaisa gratefully thankfully she's going to be staying with some friends uh, in the district and so that's going to be fun to be there uh, together uh, also uh, right after worship hopefully this will be rather quick uh, we did it last year and it worked out great we're having a calendaring meeting uh, so if you're a head of a team or a group or a committee or you know you have some dates for certain things for this coming year we invite you to join us in Fellowship Hall. Uh, everyone together working, making sure that, you know, 16 things aren't set for one date and then there's a big traffic jam of things. And so that worked out great last year and uh, we're gonna do that again today. Uh, pretty soon after worship uh, ends. And uh, yeah, I think that might be it for me for announcements. Is there anything that anyone else needs to share with us this morning? Good to see a few people that have, uh, are on the recovery trail with us today, some surgeries, and great to see each of you uh, with us this morning. And so, let us continue in worship. Good morning. Please join me in the responsive call to worship up on the screen. God, you have created us for your purposes, and we give you thanks. Christ, you set us free, and we give you our lives. You call us out from our lives into your life. You call us to follow you instead of our own ways. Help us, Christ, to relinquish all things and follow you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come, Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, and transform us by your grace. Alleluia. Alleluia. And now please join me in the unison prayer. God of life, Jesus called to the fishermen and they heard something in that voice, something compelling, and they followed him. Call to us now. Let us hear your voice. Let it touch something deep in us and move us to respond. We are hungry to hear and to follow. We open our hearts to your word. Amen. I invite you to join us in singing our opening song, Worthy of Worship. It's number 38 in the blue hymnal, and it's up on the screen as well. Please stand and join us as you're able.
you may be seated. And as you're being seated, as always, I want to invite the kids uh, to join me up in the front for our children's sermon. Good morning. Always good to see somebody wearing Crocs after, an, after a snowstorm. That's awesome. Fantastic. Well, it is, as always, good to see each of you. You know, could you, Murphy, could you go right down there so it's a little easier for me to see you, all right? And it's great to see you guys. Always, always, always. And I have three things here in front of me. I have, let me see it. Let's hold it up like this, maybe. Maybe it'll fall, maybe it won't, I don't know. Maybe they can get that in the shot for the video later on. What, what is this, guys? Do you know what this is? Yeah, Murph, what is it? Soup. soup. That's right. Soup. What is the purpose of soup? Somebody besides Murphy. Yes, uh, Elijah. To eat. To eat. Is there any other purpose for soup besides eating? Yeah, well, yes? To make you feel better when you're sick. Oh, now isn't that nice? To make you feel better when you're sick. That's right. To, if, to, to, to give you nourishment as well, right? So there's a number of things. Let's see what these kinds of soup are here. We've got... When is this? Oh. Healthy request chicken with rice. Have any of you ever had chicken with rice soup? No? Have any of you ever had chicken with rice soup? Yes. Whoa, good. No, that's good. How about this one? This one is called <coughs> double noodle. Have any of you ever had double noodle soup? <laughs> Have any of you ever had double noodle soup? No. Oh, man, oh, man. All right. How about, oops, look at that. <laughs> I almost clunked Murphy in the head. Good thing he moved. <laughs> How about this one? Cream of celery soup. Have any of you ever had cream of celery soup? <laughs> Ella's like, no, she's almost throwing up just thinking about it. But man, I love cream of celery soup. Have any of you ever had cream of celery soup? Yes. All right, thank you. Well, look at this. All of these are different soups, right? Can we agree that they're all soup? And if you eat any of them, except maybe Ella eating the cream of celery soup, right? They maybe make you feel good when you're sick, they provide nourishment, they fill you up, right? All that kind of stuff. So in general, soup does, is, does that, right? But are they the same? Are there, are, there, are there any differences between these soups? Yeah, Murphy. They're all different kinds of soup. They're all different kinds of soup. And you know what else I noticed? They're in little different cans. See, two of these cans have the pop top kind of thing, and one of them doesn't. So they're kind of the same, and they're kind of different, but all of the soups provide nourishment and maybe make you feel better and fill you up and that kind of stuff, right? You know what? These cans of soup are kind of like us, kind of like us people, because we're all people, right? But we're all a little bit different, too. Some of us are wearing Crocs, some of us are wearing tennis shoes, some of us have a hoodie on, some of us have long hair, some of us have short hair. Some of you don't have much hair, you know? <laughs> all those kinds of things, right? But here's one thing about all of us. You know, soup has something in common, right? Fills us up, makes us feel better and all that stuff. And here's something about all of us. Even though we might be a little bit different, young, old, tall, not so tall, you know, wearing Crocs, wearing regular shoes, we're all a little bit different. But here's the thing. God can use all of us to show and share his love to other people. It doesn't matter if we're this or we're that or we're another thing or we're a different thing. God can use all of us to be kind to people, to tell people that God loves them, to ask someone maybe if they're having a bad day to say, could I say a prayer for you? And then to actually do it. So even though we're different, we are all the same, that God can use us to help share and show his love to other people. And I want you to remember that because we are all different, right? 
none of us are exactly the same as another person. But even in all of our differences, we have that thing in common that God can use us to share and show his love to other people. Soup is different. We are all different. But we can show God's love to anyone, even if we're not quite the same. So let's pray. God, thank you for soup and thank you for people. Thank you that soup can fill us up and make us feel good. And God, thank you that each of us, even though we're a little different than each other person, we can show your love to other people by being kind to them, by being caring, by maybe praying for people or doing things for people, like maybe shoveling their sidewalks or something. God, help us to remember that no matter if we're young or older, if we're, uh, you know, have long hair or short hair, if we're this or that, you can use us to help show your love to other people. God, we give you thanks, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name, and we thank you for the kids that are here learning about your great love for them. We give you thanks, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now, I, I probably shouldn't do this, but you know what? I'm, later on, I'm going to just... You know what, Aiden, can you put these three cans of soup on that bench right there? And then if any of you kids want to grab one of these cans of soup and maybe have them for a snack today or something, like that cream of celery soup, that would be awesome. So if any of you want to take a can of soup home, you can do that, all right? Thanks, guys. You can go back to where you were sitting, or uh, if an adult goes with you, somebody can go, you can go up to the balcony as well. In our opening song, Worthy of Worship, we talked about all kinds of things. Uh, that God is worthy of worship and worthy of our praise. And one of the ways that we worship God and praise God is by offering to him the gifts that we have. Uh, gifts of care and compassion and kindness, sharing and showing God's love to other people. And of course, when we're in the church, we do that as well by making gifts, financial gifts that God asks us to do to help further uh, his kingdom in the world so that we can share and show his love in many different ways. So thinking about all the different ways that we can share and show God's love to people, we call upon our ushers to receive our tithes and offerings.
seated. Our first scripture this morning is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. This is the word of the Lord. Let's turn to God in prayer. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness to each one of us and to us as a church family and to humanity, God. Thank you for the many gifts that we have already received, the gifts of tithes and offerings, the gifts of music, of sharing talents, the gifts of children and fellowship with one another and hearing different noises that remind us that we are here, we are alive, and we are together. Thank you for the gift of warmth and shelter and clean water. And God, this week we pray for all those in our world and our area who are struggling to find these basics. We ask that you would provide and that if there are ways that you want us to respond and help provide, that you would move us to do that, God. We pray for areas of our world facing constant violence and upheaval and displacement and disagreement and intolerance. The Palestinians and the Israelis, Ukrainians and Russia, the Taiwanese and the Chinese and many other warring factions. God, we pray for victims. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones through these conflicts. We pray for those facing the effects of natural disaster, including extreme temperatures. And right now we think about the cold, but there are also those in our world who are facing extreme heat. We pray, God, for those who are responding to natural disasters and other needs around our world and our community, and we thank you for these individuals and teams. God, we lift up covenant missionaries Christy and Christopher Johnson, missionaries to Thailand, and we ask that you resource them for what it is you're calling them to do this month, God. We lift up Worthwhile Wear, a ministry, a local ministry that we, we support, God, as a church, and we thank you, God, for Dan Emmer, the CEO, and we pray for all those who are coming to Worthwhile Wear ministry for help, for resources, and for all those who volunteer and work there. God, we pray for our denomination, the Covenant Church, in particular, this week's Midwinter Conference, where colleagues in ministry from around the nation and globe gather to learn, to pray, worship, and fellowship. We pray for our president, Reverend Tammy swanson Dreheim, and for the Midwinter planning team, Jill, Eric, and Jordan. For those in need of your healing, God, we ask that you provide your healing, that you provide your healing hand in different situations and with medical teams, through medical teams, through loved ones, in whatever way is possible, God. We continue to lift up Carl and Patty Flandermeyer, Carla's parents, Dick and Betty Stewart, Dave and Charlotte Williams, Tom, a friend of the Thurers, and Donna Hodson's great nephew, Baby Calloway, born this week. God, we thank you for progress. It was kind of scary at the beginning when he was born, but we thank you for progress and signs of progress. And we Pray that you continue to be present with him and his family and medical teams as they continue to care for him and treat him. Lord, for those in transition, whether they are positive transitions or challenging ones, God, we ask for your guidance. For those who are feeling lonely, we ask for a community to come around them and for your presence to be made known. And for each one of us, regardless of what we go through this week, God, we ask for your presence. And God, now we take a moment of silence to offer to you our private prayers and praises.
Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers and help us to never forget that you are a prayer away. You are so close to us, God, and we often forget that. Help us not to forget that this week, God. We ask that you help us to wait patiently for the responses to these prayers, and we pray them all through the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught each of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The gospel text is from Mark 1, verses 14 through 20. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called to them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
want to say thank you to Lois. And, you know, we have a different perspective here. It's fun watching, you know, Jeff play and Carl play. But I noticed Lois did something we once in a while remember to tell people before you come up, tap the base of the microphone here. Otherwise, sometimes there's this loud click or loud noise. Good job, Lois. <laughs> Excellent job. Well, friends, grace and peace as always to each of you from our Lord, Savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, sometimes people have asked us, you know, how do you as a staff choose the, the scriptures that you use in worship each week? Uh, people have asked that, and, you know, it's not like we just uh, kind of randomly fling open the Bible and say, this is the one that we're going to do today. That's not how we do it. Uh, and we don't just use our favorite Bible texts each week because you'd all get pretty tired of what is, you know, one of my favorite verses, you know, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. After about 16 weeks of that, you'd probably get a little bit tired. Uh, there, there's a, there are different ways we figure out the texts. You know, sometimes uh, we have a series that's going on, and so we're focusing on a series. Maybe, maybe there's a series about joy, and so there'd be a lot of texts, a lot of the scripture from, from Philippians, for example. But most of the time, uh, we use texts from what is called uh, the lectionary. And the lectionary is a standardized listing of scriptures that covers usually over, uh, over a three-year period, covers the main teachings and main uh, theological points of our faith. If you wanted to kind of check out what that actually looks like, after the service ends, you could look uh, in the blue hymnal, for example. I'm sure it's in the red hymnal, too. But I know in the blue hymnal, there's a chart that kind of lays this out, uh, starting at page 960 in the blue hymnal. But the texts for the week, uh, they almost always share a common theme. Um, you know, for example, we're just not too far from Advent. And, of course, during Advent, all of the texts uh, are going to talk about Jesus and the coming of Jesus in some way, shape, you know, manner, or, or form. And so as I looked at our text for this week, uh, there were a couple themes that, that uh, I saw and uh, that ran through or linked our, linked our texts together. And as a point of information, we usually use two texts a week. There are four texts suggested each week. In the lectionary, there's always an Old Testament text, uh, there's a psalm, uh, there's a, a gospel text, and then there's always another New Testament text. Uh, for today, we have a t from Jonah uh, that Lois just read, uh, that, I'm sorry, that Pastor Kathy read for us, and then Mark uh, as well from the New Testament. One theme, you mentioned Jonah. The theme you're always going to think about right away is fish, right? Fish are the big whale. And so, you know, fish, you're always thinking about that with Jonah. And then, of course, in, uh, in Mark, uh, we have these verses, 16 and 17. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother. We just heard about this in our choral anthem. His brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Fish is a theme that runs through our text, but that's not the one that spoke to me this week. The one that spoke to me this week was uh, the theme of confession. Confession. Um, you know, there's confession in uh, the church, I think sometimes, especially if you have a Catholic background, you think about confession, but confession runs throughout the life of the church as well. And we see confession uh, in various forms in, in pop culture as well. We're going to look at two pop culture examples and then get to our texts in just a few minutes. In 1980, in the way back machine, in 1980, the second Star Wars movie came out. And I know it's the fifth one chronologically, but it's the second one that came out. 
Anybody remember the name of that second Star Wars movie that came out? The one that came out in 1980? Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back, that's right. Who, who ever saw The Empire Strikes Back? I think probably most of us have. Okay, great. There's a certain scene in that movie, and I, I got this quote from Lucasfilm. Dot com. And George Lucas, of course, the producer of, uh, of Star Wars, the Star Wars series. And he writes, they, they write this. <clears throat> Chasing unclear visions of the future, Luke Skywalker flies to Cloud City and is quickly locked into an overmatched duel with Darth Vader, whom Luke believes to be the murderer of both Obi-Wan Kenobi and his own father. Losing his hand to Vader's lightsaber, he climbs onto a gantry perched above an endless chasm. The villain attempts to woo him with promises of shared dominion over the galaxy. Luke will not join him, so Vader chooses to impart a secret. The dialogue has become part of popular culture, but ironically, the line is often misquoted. People often say that Darth Vader said, Luke, I am your father. But in fact, Vader responds to Luke's claim that he'd killed Luke's father, and Darth Vader says, No, I am your father. That's the big confession in that movie where Darth Vader confesses to Luke that he is his father. And then a confession, another confession from one of our favorite movies. Who has ever seen the movie The Princess Bride? Oh, good. And you know what? It's not just a movie. It's a book as well, believe it or not. The two main characters in uh, The Princess Bride are Wesley and Buttercup. Buttercup. That's right. And as background, Wesley says many times to Buttercup, as you wish, as you wish. From flicks.com.au, an Australian movie site, we read this, as you wish. Three simple words that mean so much more. As the grandfather says in the movie, as he's reading the book to his grandson, as the grandfather says in the movie, when he was saying, as you wish, what he meant was, I love you. But it's not just, I love you. Wesley is also telling Buttercup that he would do everything anything for her and that he would always be there for her and love her always all that and then some more in a little as you wish another confession another confession each time wesley said as you wish he was confessing his love and loyalty to his future bride, Buttercup. In both cases, these confessions we see are meaningful and powerful uh, expressions, meaningful and powerful actions. I mean, come on, you know. Darth Vader, what a moment that was, confessing to Luke that he was his father. And then it's so sweet the confession that Wesley made time after time to Buttercup, as you wish. In our texts today, there are two meaningful confessions as well. And we're first going to look at Jonah and then look at Mark. In Jonah, again, you know, the first thing you think about uh, is, is the whale and the fish story, you know, Jonah getting uh, caught up in the, the belly of the whale for three, three days. But we remember first God's call to Jonah. God calls Jonah to go to Nineveh 
a terrible and wicked city uh, to confront them and to call them to repentance. Jonah flees, he goes the other way, and again, we got the whole whale and fish thing, but eventually, Jonah gets to Nineveh, and in verses 4 and 5, we read this. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, And from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. We remember as well that uh, in Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, this was the beginning of this saga about Jonah and his trip to Nineveh to call them to repentance. God says to Jonah, announce my judgment against Nineveh. Because I have seen how wicked its people are. And the actions, the actions of the Ninevites, the actions that they showed, declaring a fast, uh, putting on burlap to show their sorrow, their actions showed their confession. They confessed their sins and sought forgiveness. What happened next? Verse 10, when God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. Confession of their sin, confession of their evil, confession of their wickedness with a desire to turn from their ways led to God's grace and mercy and love being poured out upon the Ninevites. What's the confession that we see in Mark? John the Baptist, he was out there preaching, and in verse 15, he says this, the time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Like the Ninevites, people here are encouraged to confess and repent, to turn from their sins and believe the good news that God can and will and does forgive sin and in doing so draws each of us closer to himself. The Ninevites saw this reality in action. God graciously and lovingly forgave their sins and anyone that took to heart John the Baptist's preaching and confessed their sins would have experienced that same forgiveness, love, mercy, and grace offered to them by our gracious God. Friends, it is the same for us. You know, we are pretty prideful and stubborn people. That's what happens when sin is in our lives, and we all have sin in our lives. But it is the same for us. Just as Jonah called the Ninevites to confession, and John the Baptist called those around him to confession, we are also called to confession. And so today, and Walt, if I can, Walt, if, uh, let's see, he's there. And so today, we will invite you as individuals and as a church to confession. We'll do that in just a minute. Now, we don't know exactly uh, what the Ninevites confessed, and we don't know exactly what those hearers of John confessed. That's not the point. It's not our business to know what anybody else confesses, that's between them and us and God. Confession for us for today will be a time to lay ourselves and lay our souls open to God and receive the love and the mercy and the care and the forgiveness offered to the Ninevites, to John's audience, and to each and every one of us. 
And as John the Baptist said, that's good news. So together, in just a minute, we're going to unite in a prayer that's going to be on the screen. It's a prayer of confession. There is going to be a time of silence during there, and we'll be, you'll see the word silence on the screen, where we're just going to kind of confess and talk to God for a few minutes, or at least a minute. It's going to seem like a lot longer because, you know, silence in church, there's this multiplier effect that is like by a zillion, right? Uh, so we're going to do this, we're going to pray this prayer of confession together. It comes from a uh, prayer book actually that, that we have called a New Zealand prayer book from 1989 of the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia. And so Walt, if you could uh, turn the lights off, that would be great. And so now we come before our loving and caring and forgiving and merciful God. Praying together these words on the screen. Dear God, thank you for all that is good, our creation and our humanity, for the stewardship you have given us of this land earth, for the gifts of life and one another, for your love which is unbounded and eternal. O thou most holy and beloved, my family, my God. And we continue now praying together, saying, We have wounded your love. O God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. The light of the world transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, welcome us. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being. All that we are have been and we shall be to his known to you, to the very secret of our hearts and all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burning to us, cleansing wind, blow through us, fountain of water, well up within us, that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Friends, hear this good news. In and by the name and power of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And as John the Baptist said, that's good news. It's good news for us today. It's good news for us tomorrow. And it's good news for all of our days to come. Sisters and brothers, live in the glory and wonderment of this forgiveness and offer it freely and lovingly and lavishly to others. Amen. Well, friends, our closing hymn is How Firm a Foundation, talking about our foundation of faith in Jesus who forgives our sins. May we remember this prayer of confession even now as we sing verses 1, 2, and 5 of our closing hymn, How Firm a Foundation. 
It's in your blue hymnal number 437, and it will also be here on the screen. <laughs> receive the benediction forgiven friends go in peace and love and serve the lord amen and just a note uh it's why don't we start the planning meeting at about 20 minutes two so in about 15 minutes or so why don't we start the meeting then and we encourage you to come and join us if that's good for you friends go in peace and serve the lord <laughs>